Midwest inflation has struck again. We have the new inflation numbers up. They're at a 40-year high, almost 8%. Worst among the offending products is food. Up, up and away. So we're going to go find out how bad it is at my local grocer. What can my bag of groceries tell you about inflation or just inflation? Numbers out today, 10% increase in food prices. Let's go through the items and how much they've risen one by one. Eggs. Tomatoes. Lettuce. Pasta. I'm not going to try throwing this one up and down outside of the box. Ground beef. 10% food price inflation in one year alone. Why? Trudeau has brought in a carbon tax that increases the cost for farmers and truckers to produce and deliver the food that we eat. Two, he's running monster deficits that he's paying for with printed money. More dollars chasing fewer goods always equals higher prices for everything. And three, uh, government gatekeepers are driving up the cost of farmers to produce our foods and truckers uh, to deliver it, including the vaccine mandates, which means we have fewer truckers to deliver our food. So what's the solution? One, get rid of the Trudeau carbon tax to reduce the cost of everything. Two, cap government spending through a pay-as-you-go law so that we can phase out the deficit and stop printing inflationary money. And three, let's get rid of the government gatekeepers that are burdening our hardworking farmers so that they can produce affordable, safe, food for all of us and get rid of all these mandates so our truckers can more affordably deliver that food to our local grocers. That's just common sense. Now, take back control of your life. Let's make this the freest country on earth. I thought that was great. Over 100,000 views on Twitter alone. Probably many more on YouTube and Facebook. I didn't count. Polyev does these a lot. They're clever and well done. They're full of substance, though, aren't they? They show he's a lively communicator, smart. There's a sense of humor. And he's the opposite of Trudeau, who, like Kamala Harris, insists on talking to you like you're a three-year-old. So Polyev goes straight to the people for free. Those aren't paid ads, those little videos. They're, they're shared by real people, which is more valuable. Polyev has stopped going to Conservative Party of Canada debates. That's frustrating for journalists, including for me, but that's sort of the point. Why bother having other candidates take pot shots at you, and why bother letting the Rosemary Bartons of the world ask you fake gotcha questions? I like those little videos that Polyev does, but back to the media. Polyev has generally avoided them, and he has pushed back against them in a good way. He's not, he's not as antagonistic or personally mean towards them as I've seen Maxime Bernier be, but he's definitely tougher than any conservative in recent memory, including Stephen Harper, who had nine years to solve the CBC problem but didn't. But here's what I'm so excited about today, I, and this is good news, and I'm not being sarcastic. Came out of the blue, a press release by Pierre Polyev. I, I didn't really understand what he was talking about. He said, no wonder trust in the media is at an all-time low. One of Global News' so-called journalists decided to smear me and thousands of other Canadians because we criticized the federal government's unscientific and discriminatory vaccine mandates. My campaign's response to this attack. And then a page-long sentence. Now, I'm going to read it in part because it's long and I want to show you it's long. Um, it was about Polly of walking with veteran James Topp who walked across Canada to Ottawa in support of freedom. It was part of the trucker rebellion. I'm going to read it to you now, okay? This is what he put out the other day. Canadians' trust in the news media has reached an all-time low, and when we look at your coverage of these issues, it's easy to understand why. Instead of just covering the news, unprofessional journalists like you try to set disingenuous traps to attack your opponents. At every available opportunity, Pierre Polyev has supported and will continue to support Canadians' right to restore their freedoms and take back control of their lives. He has done this all while repeatedly calling for individuals who engage in illegal behavior to express heinous views uh, to be held accountable for their actions. Mr. Polyev has stated unequivocally that, quote, any and all racism is evil and must be stopped. 
Since you insist on demonizing Canadians who dare to speak up against the Trudeau government, we can only assume that Global News is content to be a liberal mouthpiece. Mr. Polyev supported James Top's singular cause of ending vaccine mandates so people can take back control of their lives. Your tactic seems to be to demand that Polyev answer for all the words and deeds of not just everyone he has ever met, but also everyone they have ever met. That amounts to guilt by multiple degrees of separation. Mr. Polyev meets and talks with thousands of people who meet and talk with thousands of people. Each of those people is individually responsible for their own words and deeds. For example, Mr. Polyev has met with Justin Trudeau. That does not make Mr. Polyev responsible for Trudeau's many racist outbursts, including dressing up in racist costumes and mistreating visible minorities in his own party. Mr. Polyev will continue to stand up for everyday Canadians and won't apologize for doing so. And what's a little bit weird there, you can tell, is it says you, you, you. So this was written to a reporter, but put out on that Twitter feed without reference to the reporter, mentioned Global News. It was a little unusual, wasn't that? I read that and I wondered, who was he talking about? He didn't say... But I liked it in that instead of answering the journalist like a meek and submissive Andrew Shearer or Aaron O'Toole would have done, he blasted her, even though he didn't mention her by name, which is slightly confusing to me. I mean, why hide the identity? Why? But no matter, soon enough, the journalist in question identified herself. It's Rachel Gilmore of Global News. We've talked about her before and her extreme bias. And she said this in response to Pauline. She said, this statement, which I now realize was a yet-to-be-published press release, was sent to me in response to my request for comment two days ago. If anyone is interested in the questions I asked his team, as well as the story itself, here's additional context. And I'll just read it so you hear the whole story. Polyev's team sent this to me on Tuesday in response to my request for comment. It read like a press release then. I guess it was a press release. Here are the questions I asked, which instead of answering, he replied to by calling me unprofessional. Well, I think you are, sister. Does Mr. Polyev feel he has a responsibility to distance himself from movements that call for actions that violate Canadian law and the principles of our democracy? <laughs> is, that, is that how you summarize the trucker rebellion? Uh, hey, did you ever ask Trudeau that about Black Lives Matter or Antifa? Does he have concerns that his supportive figures like Top and his silence when Top's ties to figures like McKenzie are revealed could be interpreted as endorsing such far-right views. I don't even know who McKenzie is, but that really is what Polyev said. Multiple degrees of separation. This is not journalism. How does he respond to those criticizing his silence in relation to these far-right figureheads? <laughs> does Mr. Polyev condemn white supremacy and comments from Jeremy McKenzie, including that he'd like to watch gallows on Parliament Hill? Now, you know that Pierre Polyev's wife is a visible minority, right? I've never had a politician publish an entire press release to call me unprofessional for asking questions, but I guess there's a first time for everything. <laughs> now, are those fair questions? No, they are not. They're not real questions at all. They're guilt by association, but they're just accusations with a question mark at the end of them. Polyev was literally just walking with a veteran on the street, and these questions were put to him. Imagine a journalist playing that game with Justin Trudeau, with, say, Gian Gameshi, the CBC liar who would punch girls in the face again and again on dates, <clears throat> or frankly, Trudeau's former roommate, who was later convicted of being a sexual predator. And I mean, that's not really fair, but this sure is. Trudeau and Jaspal Atwal, a convicted would-be assassin who tried to murder a cabinet minister in India while on vacation in BC, Trudeau actually took that convicted criminal with him back to India. That's not even guilt by association. That's why did you bring him? What you just saw was an excerpt from my nightly show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every weekday, I do a monologue. Usually, it's about half an hour. Then I interview an interesting guest, and then we read my hate mail or my fan mail, whichever is more fun. It's only available behind a paywall, though. That's how we pay our bills here at Rebel News. We don't take a dime from Justin Trudeau, but the good news is it's only eight bucks a month, about half the price of Netflix. And in addition to my weekly, sorry, my nightly show, you also get weekly shows from four other friends here at Rebel News. So you're getting 36 shows a month just for eight bucks. I think it's worth it. And even if you're not quite sure, do it anyways, because 
We rely on viewers like you to keep us free and independent. I promise you I'll never take a dime from Trudeau. Just go to rebelnewsplus.com and click subscribe. Thanks.